The Google Pixel Fold. Let's see what's in the box. Dave Taylor here and I'm checking out this. This is the brand new Google Pixel Fold Android smartphone and it's in the box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an unboxing. I also have the Google Pixel Fold case, which is a surprisingly expensive little case, but we'll get to that. So there's actually not a lot in the box, even though it's a fairly hefty size and fairly weighty. So I'm gonna run through some specs, then we'll unbox, then I'll give you a couple more specs. So first off, it folds. So that means when it's closed, you have a 5.8 inch display. So it's a pretty typical smartphone size. But when you open it up, you then get a 7.6 inch OLED display. And they're different dimensions, which is really interesting. So the external cover is 2092 by 1080 pixels. So that's a typical HD screen. And then the internal folding screen is 2208 by 1840. So you get a big screen and it's a much more square experience in terms of resolution. It's all FHD plus OLED and the exterior, which is the better screen, is 408 pixels per inch at 120 hertz. It has Corning Gorilla Victus glass. Now the very latest generation is Victus 2, but Victus still represents, what, the eighth generation of Gorilla glass from Corning, so expect it to be pretty tough. Powered by a Google Tensor G2 OctaCore with, ready for this, two cores at 2.7 gigahertz, two cores at 2.32 gigahertz, and four cores at 1.94 gigahertz. It's a lot to keep track of. Suffice to say, it should have plenty of power to do everything that you want, even when you have it unfolded and you're doing two apps simultaneously. We'll see how that works when I get to the review. For now, like I said, we're just unboxing. Okay, Android 13, 12 gig of RAM, comes with either 256 or 512 gig of storage. There's no SIM card, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no micro SD card, so you can't add storage. It does have a SIM card, because you need to be online. There's probably also eSIM support. It does do global networking, so you can use this presumably anywhere in the world, which is really nice. Um, split screen mode gives you two apps running simultaneously. And then cameras, you know what? Let's start opening this up and then we'll talk about cameras. So the back, hashtag Team Pixel, has paper tabs. I like that they have these seals now that I don't need to pull out my knife to open. So, ready? We're gonna actually do the actual unboxing. Let's see what the presentation of this device is once we open the box. All right, so you open it up. And it looks like that, which is not super exciting, but let's open it up. And so now you can see that it's the two pieces. So it's obviously in folded mode and I'm not going to wait any further. We're going to take this little paper cover off and we're going to see what it looks like. And notice there's one inside to keep the screens protected. This is a weak point with folding phones. I'll come back to that. Now, here's the outside. And then on the back, we have what looks like a pretty typical like Android 7 design, but the cameras are laid out a little different as you can see here. And they are rear facing a 10.8 megapixel ultra wide F2.2, a 48 megapixel wide, that's your main camera at a speedy F1.7, and a pretty slow 10 megapixel 4.5X folded telephoto, which is only at F3. And then there's a front-facing camera here, so I haven't opened it, so this is just in typical mode. The front-facing camera is an internal 8 megapixel F2, and then if I use it, let's unfold it. Ah, look at that inside. So nice. When you have it in unfolded mode, there is an internal, actually, Wait, I'm not sure which one's which. I think this might be the 9.5 megapixel f2.2, and then the internal selfie camera is the 8 megapixel f2.0. One of the things I'm looking forward to is being able to say, hey Google, take a selfie. We'll see how that works. But here it is, fully open. There is a seam, you can see that, and it's more like a fold, you know, when you have this 
really almost perfectly flat phone. It doesn't quite get flat, but it's pretty close. And I think if I lay it down, yeah, there's a little wobble there. Um, that might be something they do just to sort of minimize the impact on the screen of the folding and unfolding. But let's go ahead. I'll give you a tour. Let's close it up. A tour of the buttons on the right hand side on what I would describe as the bottom surface is the volume up and down and power. And I'm going to push power. Let's see if this thing turns on. Usually they ship with batteries, so that's good. And on the top, there is on the upper surface, a speaker cutout. And on the lower surface, what looks like where you would put your SIM card. And then, of course, there's the seam. And this is actually a, uh, let me get this right, a durable stainless steel hinge, we'll see. And then on the bottom, on the left surface, is, wait, that looks like a SIM card. Uh-huh, the top looks like it might be a micro SD slot, or maybe there's two different sizes of SIMs it sports. I don't know yet, I'll have to do some research. And then the bottom has USB-C and another speaker cutout. And let's see, so here we are. Welcome to your Pixel. I'm not going to go any further than that, but let's see what happens if I open it up. Do I switch to... Oh, look at that. Welcome to your Pixel. Nice and big. Very cool. So, this is IPX8 waterproof. It has the built-in VPN from Google One. And battery-wise, it has a 4821 milliamp hour battery, a smidge less than the Android 7 Pro. And they say it gives you greater than 24-hour battery life. We'll have to find out. And it has wireless charging support. My guess would be that it's probably on this surface. And then, of course, then you have that cutout for the uh, cameras. And my experience, particularly with the iPhone side, is that because you have that camera bump, the wireless charging doesn't work as well as it should. That's something I assume the industry is going to figure out. There is a second generation Qi wireless charging protocol that's just coming onto the market. Hopefully that'll address this. And let's see, I keep moving this around and it is orientation sensitive. So if I do this and then I turn it this way, you can see how it's super quick and spinning around. Pretty cool. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and leave it like that. And this is one of the big modes that they talk about is that you can have an app running and another app running here, or you could use this for selfies or for video. Pretty cool. But I'm also curious, as are, I'm sure are you, what else is in the box? So let's find out. So it does come with some information here, and then it feels like the sides have stuff in them. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Let's open it up. Hmm, might just be spacers. Yep, sad but true. I think <laughs> just cardboard spacers, not very exciting. I assume it's the same on both sides. So no secret cables or anything hidden in there. But as we go further down, now you can see there's some paperwork from Google. So I'll pull this out. And then underneath the paperwork, very typical for the Pixel line is a USB-C to USB-C charging cable and a USB-C to USB-A adapter for those of you that need that for your cables. I'm not sure why. And that's everything. So somewhere, I'm guessing in here, is also a SIM removal tool, which is that little tiny metal thing that honestly, I think probably 80% of the industry just uses a paper clip that they bend. Either way, it works. And that's our unboxing. So we have the adapter. We have the charging cable. We have some documentation, probably mostly legal jargon. We have the insert with pieces of cardboard. <laughs> Don't get excited like I did, thinking that, aha, look, they're going to surprise us. And of course, most importantly, this really cool phone. So. 5.5 inches by 6.2 inches by um, 0.24, about a quarter inch thick when it's closed. When you open it up, I'm sorry, this, <laughs> let's do that again. This is not, this is the first time I've done a folding phone. So getting all these dimensions is tricky. So this in closed mode is 5.5 inches. Let's push the button here. There we go. Um, hmm. It's not orienting correctly. 
I guess it wants to be sideways. Okay, so this is 5.5 inches by 3.1 inches by half an inch thick. So it's a pretty thick phone, although they say it is the thinnest of the folding phones. Not a lot on the market yet, but when we open it up, then the dimensions change. And this now is 5.5 inches by 6.2 inches by a quarter inch thick, logically. And it's 10 ounces, so it's pretty hefty. But realize you really have two smartphones here, you know, that are just connected at the hip, as it were. <laughs> so that's everything here in the box. And I also got the Pixel Fold case. I don't even know what color this is. Let's see. So rather mysterious. This looks like it is the same color as the phone. So this is the Obsidian case and no big surprise. It's two separate pieces that you put on and it's a tough case because you have so much screen. You obviously don't want to cover any of the screen, but you want the case to give you a bit of a bumper so you have a little bit more protection because this is a very expensive phone. So it's really all I got here. So really, really intrigued, you know, intrigued and excited to have more time with this phone and to run some tests. I will do a full review. I know the cameras are going to be great. That's absolutely the trademark of the Pixel lineup is that Google really does great job with its cameras but it is pretty spendy. So that's something you really want to consider. It's also the very first generation from Google of this sort of articulated hinged phone and screen. And there are already some isolated reports of people having some problems with damage, particularly if there's like dust or dirt that gets in the screen and then they close it. That has a tendency, depending on what that is, of being gritty and possibly damaging the screen. Now, to me, that sounds like user error because it's just inevitable. You're going to have to be a little bit more protective. It's like if you have two TV screens that are going to touch, you really need to make sure there's no dust or dirt or sand or grit on it, right? Seems logical, but I will try it out more and we'll see where we are. Now, let's also talk about the price because it's pretty spendy. Now, I will tell you that AT&T was very generous in sending me this whole setup to test and review, which is great. So I'm going to quote their pricing. But first off, comes in two colors. This is the Obsidian. But if you would like to have a white with gold accents, then that's only available through Google. That's what they call their porcelain color. And this phone with the smaller memory capacity of 256 gig is $1879.99 or $25 a month times 36 months through att.com. Again, AT&T sent me this phone, so I'm gonna suggest you go and start by checking out their pricing. I know other carriers have special pricing, and if you go directly to Google, they also have different pricing and they have some promos. I noticed when I checked today that if you pre-order this, you can get a free pair of the, I think it's the Google Pixel Watch is what they have now. Earlier they were doing the Google Buds. So always worth shopping around to see where you can get your best deal. The case, which isn't much yet, I expect a lot more to show up on Amazon and eBay over the next month or so, but this is $59.99, so it's pretty spendy for such a small amount of material, and it comes in light blue or white or this sort of dark gray color, which I'm gonna call black, but so 60 bucks for this, and then the phone itself is gonna run you almost $1,900 or more if you wanna get the larger memory capacity. So this better be one heck of an experience for $2,000 for a smartphone. But so far, super interesting. That's all I got. This is probably the world's longest unboxing. Come back, I will absolutely have a review with tons of demo footage and photos, and I'll catch you then. See ya.